Hello. Our scripture reading this week will finish chapter 4 of the book of Mark. I'll be reading verses 33 through 41. And with many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. But without a parable, he did not speak to them. And when they were alone, he explained all things to his disciples. On the same day, when the evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was, and other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the word of the Lord. Jesus, greater than all my sin, how shall my tongue describe it? Where shall its praise be? Good morning, Rustic Hills Baptist Church. It's good to be here today. I'm here because Pastor Lightfoot has been ill and right now he's dealing with COVID pneumonia. So be very much in prayer for him. This can be deadly and we just pray that he'll get through it. I wanna read Romans chapter one, verses 16 and 17 as introduction and then we'll get into the message today. The Scripture says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God and salvation to everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Verse 17 says, For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. So we praise God for that. We have been told often that we are to share the gospel that we are to present the gospel to people, that we are to endeavor to see people come to Christ. 
Uh, this is a wicked thing as far as our world is concerned, proselytizing. Well, you can call it proselytizing, but God calls it obedience. If we're not sharing the gospel, witnessing, yeah, we do that a lot. But if we're not sharing the gospel, we're disobedient to God. And if we're disobedient to God, it's sin. Okay? So, uh, one of the things that I, I learned as I went through different areas of uh, learning how to share the gospel is that there are a couple of questions you can ask to know where people are. First question is, if you died today, do you know you have eternal life? That's common. You've heard that before. The second question's tougher. The second question is, if you did die today and you went into the presence of God, because he's the one who's going to meet you at the gate, not Peter. If you died today and you went into the presence of God, and God said, he has the right to do this. Why should I give you eternal life? How would you answer God? That question. Okay. Well, I want to share with you a, a five-point gospel presentation. And uh, depending on how someone answers that question, the second question especially, you may say, I have some good news for you. And if they have given you an answer that is a lot of works, join this church, join that church, join the Masons, do whatever, then you've got really good news for them. Okay, the first thing is that God has provided salvation and it's free. Scripture says in, in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the second half of the verse, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. It also says in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that, not of yourselves, it, salvation, is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we have a gift to offer. We're not asking people to do anything. We're not asking them to, to do anything, join the church, sing in the choir, anything else. We're offering them a gift, a free gift. Now, why does man need a free gift? Because man's a rotten sinner. That includes me, rotten sinner. And, well, that's not nice to say it that way. Okay, then I'll say it another way. Man is a dirty, rotten sinner. We cannot save ourselves. We have sinned against a holy God. And God says, not me, God says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All. Now let's define sin. The world defines sin by murder, mayhem, blowing up a building, uh, robbing a bank, really gross stuff. God defines sin as anything that is contrary to his word or his character. Hmm. Anything that's contrary to his word. Yeah. We commit three types of sins. We commit sins of commission. We go out and we do bad things. Not bad as far as people are concerned. Someone says, how does this look on me, this article of clothing? It looks fine. It doesn't, but it looks fine. That's a little white lie. It's still a lie. And we shouldn't do it. So, uh, we commit sins. Then we omit things that we should do. We omit things that we should do. You know, Children, especially teenagers, should not be, have to be asked to take the trash out. Just take it out. And we omit doing that. We omit doing good things. The Bible tells us that we should be kind and considerate of others. If we're not, we're, we're committing, we're, we're sinning because we're not doing what we should do. Finally, there are sins of thought. Wow, we can load up the wagon on this one. Um, you know... That driver didn't need to do that. Will you get your car out of my way? What do you think you're doing? Why are you even here? Uh, questions like that that we ask most of the time inside our heads. Sins of thought. Well, I'd be a pretty good person, you would say. I would say if I only committed one of each of those sins. If I only committed one act that was wrong. If I only did not show kindness or didn't do something I should do. Or if I had a bad thought. Now, let me illustrate this and help you with this. Because mankind says, no, we're not, we're, we're not that bad. 
As long as we haven't murdered anyone, blown up a building, shot a police officer, we're not that bad. If I only committed three sins in a day, I'd be a pretty good person. There are some people who believe they don't commit any, but we won't go there. If I only committed three sins in a day, I'd be a good person. However, let's talk about my life. My life. Three sins a day in a week is 21. Yeah, it's still not bad. Three sins a day in a month is almost 100. Ooh, not so good. Three sins a day in a year is pushing 1,000. Some of you will do the math and can correct me later. But it's pushing 1,000. I'm 70 years old. If I stood before God with 70,000 sins in my life, and believe me, I probably sin more than three times a day. If I stood before God with 70,000 sins in my life, I'd be in real trouble. Well, since I sin more often than that, I have more sin. And standing before God with all that sin is a problem. So a man cannot save himself. Matthew, the Lord Jesus Christ, in talking to uh, on the Sermon on the Mount, said that, uh, I'm a sinner. And I can't, I can't, and God is going to hold me accountable for all that sin. Well, let's talk about God. Let's talk about God. We've got grace. Salvation's a free gift. We've got man, a dirty, rotten sinner. We've illustrated that he's a sinner, and not if he doesn't have to commit horrible sin to be a sinner. Thirdly, let's talk about God. And this is a part that everybody loves because the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 8, God is love. Everybody's excited about that if they acknowledge that they believe in any kind of a God. They're excited that he's a lover, that he loves them. However, according to the scripture, Exodus 34, God will not hold them guiltless who sin. God's going to hold us accountable for sin. People think God's up there watching me so he can count my sins. That's not what he's doing. Your sins are already done. Doesn't matter. We're born in sin. Romans 5, by, death, by sin, by man, sin came into the world and death by sin. Uh, he's promised us death. The wages of sin is death, counteracting the gift of God. No, we're, we're already condemned. Uh, John chapter 3, verse 36. And if you don't believe in Christ, you're condemned already. So it's not a matter of getting condemned later. We're condemned already. That's, that's the way it is. And God uh, is just. And there are so many illustrations in the Bible of how he judged people for their sin that it would take us the rest of the day to talk about that. So we're not going to do it. I want you to know Eternal life's a free gift. I didn't give God something to get eternal life. Oh, give Jesus your heart. That, no, that's not true. That's not true at all. Salvation's a free gift. God gave it to me. Two, he had to give it to me because I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. Three, God is just as well as being loving. He is just as well as being loving. So, four. God sent his son, Jesus Christ, who came willingly. We celebrate Christmas. Once in a while, they talk about Jesus being born. We celebrate that. We also acknowledge and celebrate the at Easter time. We don't celebrate the death of Christ. We celebrate his resurrection. But Jesus is God. John chapter 1 tells us that in the beginning was there God, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and God was the Word. And the Word was God, either way you say it. So he's God. The Gospels tell us all about his life. What did he do? He came, he lived a sinless life. Can you imagine being his brother? He had some. He lived a sinless life, absolutely sinless. And then he was convicted of... He was convicted of blasphemy because he said he was God. He told the truth and they called him a liar and they crucified him for it. But from our perspective, he was crucified for our sin. I want to illustrate that and help you understand that. Isaiah says that 
All we like as sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. My Bible. We're going to use it a little differently. This is a book. We're going to make it a book of my life. Inside the fly leaf is my birth date. Inside the back of it, which hasn't happened yet, is my death certificate. If this is my life, what's in it? There are a few good things in it. Mostly. Mostly, it's 70 years of sin that I committed because I was born a sinner. You don't have to sin to be a sinner. You sin because you are a sinner. I am too. Doesn't make it better, but it's true. This book is my sin. I stood before God. I stand before God, and what have I got to offer him? A life full of sin, a heart that is deceitful and wicked above all things. Who can know it? Jesus Christ came along. He said, I'll take that. What? I'll take that. I gave him my sin. He took it. He took it. And he died on the cross to make it right. Now here I am, standing before a holy God. I don't have a big record book of sin here. All I have is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. If you want to see an illustration of that, read Zechariah chapter 3. I am not a sinner that's lost. I'm a sinner that's saved. Okay, good, good. Grace, salvation's free. Man, rotten sinner, can't save himself. God, holy God, must punish sin, but loves the sinner. Jesus Christ came and willingly came and died on the cross for my sin. What do we have left? Faith. Faith is not intellectual assent. Oh, preacher, I've heard everything you've said. I know all that stuff. Yes, here in your mind. But have you ever done anything about it? Have you ever done anything about it? So I got it here, but it's useless. I can answer a lot of questions, but it's useless for God. Stand before God. Yeah, I, I, I know who Jesus is. I know what he did. That's great. I really appreciated it. Ah, blah, 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 blah. Really? What did you do with it? Faith is what you have to do with it. Faith is not knowing the facts in your head. James chapter 2 says the demons, the demons know who Jesus is and they are afraid of him. They tremble in fear. It's not temporary faith. We have a lovely lady here who does hair. And I appreciate that. She's cut my hair many times. If I call her, I know some things. I know, first of all, she'll make her do her dead level best to make the appointment. Two, she'll give me a really, really good haircut. It will be good. Okay. And I have faith in that. However, when I make the appointment and she cuts my hair and I walk away, that faith is over. That's temporal faith. Temporal faith. Okay. So, what is faith in Christ? Acts 16.31, the jailer sprang into the room with the Apostle Paul, and he said to him, Gentlemen, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Trust Christ. Transfer your trust from your weakness and your life to Jesus Christ alone for eternal life. That's what saving faith is. Transferring my trust to the one who can save me, the one who already died for me, the one who already made the way for me to be saved. That's what saving faith is. Question, can you learn how to present the gospel? These five things are real simple. You can learn these. You can learn some other ways. Will I pray and look for opportunities to share the gospel? Now where the rubbers meet in the road. We have had three different evangelism ministries taught in this church over the years. We're not using it. Will you pray and look for opportunities? When you go out the door in the morning, will you pray, Lord, show me someone I can share the gospel with today? I do. Pastor does. There are a large group of people here last Sunday because pastors share the gospel with them. Will I be obedient to God? Will I be obedient to God and share the gospel? Back to this. 
I would challenge you, I've challenged you before, I've been challenged myself. Find someone, I talked to a man today in my mobile home park that I want to share the gospel with. And um, uh, had the opportunity to talk with him. I've tried to share the gospel with some of my other neighbors that are already saved. But will you take the name of one person and write that person's name down somewhere? Maybe you have a prayer list. Write that person's name, that person's name on your prayer list and beside it write salvation. More than salvation, present the gospel. Will you be challenged? Will you challenge yourself to present the gospel? Finally, the warning. All of us in this room who know Christ as personal Savior will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ at the great Bema seat of Christ. How will we answer God for our service in this area of sharing the gospel? How will we answer him? Eternal God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your word. Lord, we need to be obedient in this area. We need to work at being obedient in this area. Life gets in the way. Lord, I pray the Spirit of God would work in our hearts that we might be obedient in sharing the gospel. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory and grace.
Thank mm-hmm. you.